Ledger's new recovery service announcement caused a lot of panic and confusion in the crypto community. And recently, one of Bitcoin's OG of OGs, an absolute legend, Andreas Antonopoulos, did a live stream the other day with Jameson Lopp, who has spent the last eight years building self-custody solutions, where they answered a lot of the questions we all had about the implications of Ledger Recover, more technical details about the services, and important things we should consider if we are storing cryptocurrency with Ledger devices. In fact, interestingly enough, the last time they did a live stream together was after Ledger experienced a hack of just their marketing database, not the device or anything. So people's names, emails, addresses, and such were leaked. And we did a video summary of that together a few years ago when it happened, which has some great security and information that is still relevant today. And we can implement this information as crypto investors to further secure our investments, which you can check it out by clicking on the link above. Nice. It's important to understand that there are just a handful of true information security and operational security experts in our industry who are comfortable with talking about things like risk analysis and their thoughts publicly. And Andreas and Jameson are part of this rare group of experts. So this video is a summary exploring what they discussed about Ledger's new recover services. And if you'd like to check out the entire video, there's a link to it in the description area below. Keep in mind, all of this information and advice is Andreas Antonopoulos' and Jameson Lopp's, not mine. This is simply a short recap of the hour-long live stream from the other day. Cool. So first things first, if we have cryptocurrency stored on Ledger devices, what should be our first action? It's very simple. Remain calm and do nothing for now in the immediate short term. Do not update the latest firmware. Do not try to start frantically moving funds around. Do not provide your seed phrase to anyone because when things like this happen, hackers and scammers jump on it. They will start emailing you, messaging you, spreading false information, pretending to be Ledger or pretending to be some kind of alternative product or service with the intention of stealing your funds. They do this by lying and pretending to offer alternative firmware updates for Ledger devices that is actually malicious code or malware, lying and saying you need to provide your seed phrase to protect your funds, lying and saying you need to transfer your funds somewhere, lying and setting up fake websites or social media accounts that spread false information. The possibilities are endless. So we all need to stay calm and don't do anything quickly or in a rush for now. Because that's how a lot of people lose crypto, by freaking out, rushing around, and then get scammed, lose their funds from user error, etc. Awesome. Now that we are calm and comfortable with waiting a bit before taking any action, let's go over what has happened so far with the new Ledger Recover service announcement and what it entails. Ledger Recover is a service that allows us to essentially share three fragments of our wallet's private key or seed before the private key or seed is actually created through our Ledger devices. And those three fragments are then sent to three different providers, one of which is Ledger. And in the future, if we were to ever lose access to our wallet's private key or seed phrase, we can identify ourselves with a passport and have them recover our seed by assembling two of the three fragments. So effectively, our seed is split into three pieces, and with any two of the three pieces, the seed can be reconstructed, thereby restoring our access to our cryptocurrency investments. Cool. So Ledger's initial announcement about this new service did not come with a whole lot of technical details, and the way the whole thing was rolled out caused a lot of panic and anger in the crypto community. Then, a day or so later, Ledger published an article and FAQ with much more detail about the underlying technology of the Recover services, clarifying many of the previously publicly unknown aspects of it. Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and in this video, we are going to explore important things we need to know and understand if we are using Ledger devices in light of their new Recover service in order to make an informed and educated decision about what we should do going forward to ensure the safety and security of our investments. Let's hit it. Please be sure to check out our sponsors, NordVPN, OneInch, and Tangent Wallet. Protect your data, privacy, and crypto investments by using virtual private network services with NordVPN that also ensure we can access decentralized exchanges to trade altcoins like OneInch, a decentralized exchange with the best rates that easily allows us to buy any and all altcoins that exist on multiple networks like Ethereum, Binance Chain, Arbitrum, Polygon, and more that are not listed and supported on centralized exchanges and invest in this amazing alternative to Ledger wallets called Tangent Wallet that never reveals your private keys to anyone ever. It's a hardware wallet that is the size of a credit card, multi-currency, multi-chain, super easy to set up, 
and it lets us trade altcoins faster, more securely, and conveniently to take profits on the go, making it a perfect wallet for beginners and experienced crypto investors alike. So be sure to scroll down and use the links below to access the correct and official sites, as well as redeem any special offers they have for us. Sweet. So both Andreas and Jameson emphasize the importance of understanding that as investors in this brand new developing speculative asset class, there are no perfect crypto hardware wallet devices on the market. And the only way to handle this fact and decrease the amount of risks our funds are exposed to is by diversifying our crypto investments into different types of wallets and storage options. At the end of the day, Jameson conceded that he understood where Ledger was coming from when deciding to offer these new recovery services. Because, as he is someone who works in the custody space, the tip-top number one reason why people lose their crypto using self-custody wallets is from not having a good backup solution for their seed or private key. And the second reason why people lose their crypto when using self-custody wallets is from phishing attacks, where they are tricked or socially engineered by a scammer to give them your seed phrase by telling them they have to type it into a website or provide a fake service because they lie and say your accounts have been frozen or compromised, etc. What's interesting is that they note risks like theft of your physical crypto wallet device or the device actually getting hacked by a hacker are quite far down the list in terms of risk because those types of events rarely result in loss of funds. So basically, user error and lack of securing our wallet backups and by being tricked by scammers are the main top two reasons why people lose their crypto. And another interesting statistic that was in an article that did an analysis on Ledger's Recover service mentioned that in the entire existence of Ledger's company, which has been almost 10 years, they had sold 5 million devices, of which 1 million, over 20%, were sold in just this past year following the FTX incident. So this means that there are a ton of new cryptocurrency hardware wallet users. So what Ledger is trying to do is offer a user-friendly backup solution to cater to these new hardware wallet users. However, in this specific situation, the devil is in the details. Let's explore them. Andreas Antonopoulos gives us his three main concerns about how this new Recover service was built, how it was rolled out, and how it will be implemented from a risk analysis standpoint. And before going into them, he wanted to be clear and emphasize that a hardware wallet is the best and safest solution for the vast majority of cryptocurrency investors, 99.9% .9 of users. While building your own solution, doing it yourself, using a custom Linux solution, Raspberry Pis, using paper wallets, or trying to do some weird encryption scheme using USB sticks, all of those things are much, much more risky than simply buying and using a hardware wallet correctly. And the biggest risk isn't that your keys will be stolen, rather the biggest risk is that you could make things so complicated that whatever you set up ends up inadvertently exceeding your own technical capabilities and you end up losing access to your own keys by accident. Or you'll implement a solution that you did not completely grasp or understand and put so much effort into and parameters around protecting the private key that you compromise your ability to recover access to your crypto. Not good. Now let's explore some technical details about how Ledger splits our seed if we decide to opt into their new recover service. So to split the seed, Ledger uses an industry standard algorithm called Tremere's Secret Sharing Scheme. And this is actually one of the few mathematically provable secure cryptographic algorithms developed by Shamir in the early 70s. So it's a very old concept and it allows you to take any number and split it into multiple independent shards of which you need a certain amount of those shards in the scheme to recover the original number. And with Shamir's scheme, you can calibrate it to require three out of four, four out of 10, 10 out of 26, or whatever combination you want. So if only one shard is available or any number of shards below the minimum required in the scheme, the original cannot be retrieved. So in the case of Ledger, the private key is split into three shards of which you need two to recover it with this well understood and well known algorithm. Amazing. Now let's get into some of Andreas and Jameson's concerns with other aspects of Ledger's execution of this new service. Andreas explains that it's not clear that what is transmitted from your Ledger device is just the shards because Ledger would have to be able to identify which shard belongs to whom. And so when you sign up for the service, 
these shards would have to somehow be attached or linked to you so they can identify you in case they need to perform a recovery. So an important nuance in the FAQ ledger released is that the original device that performs the split is not required for recovery, which means that there is no secret encryption key or other identifier that is tied or connected to the original ledger device. You can lose it, get rid of it or whatever, and they can recover your crypto to a new device using only two out of the three shards and your identity by using your passport and probably doing a live video interaction where you have to move your hand in front of your face to prove it's not a deep fake or AI. Cool. So here's what we know. We know that this service allows you to split your seed into three components. All three components are sent out of your device over the internet to three different providers. And these three providers have been identified as Ledger in France, a company in UK called CoinCover, and a company in the US called EscrowTech, where each one will have only one of your shards. Now in Ledger's latest post, they explain more about how they create an ephemeral encryption key in order to transmit the shards. And Andreas guesses that in the firmware of the device, they have the public keys of Ledger, CoinCover, and EscrowTech, and the ephemeral encryption key is created using the Diffie-Hellman key exchange protocol, which would be the most standard way of doing something like this, according to him. Andreas emphasizes that again, these are robust, well-known encryption mechanisms, and it all sounds good and based on open cryptographic algorithms, but he has three concerns with the way Ledger ruled this out. The first and most important problem is that this is being pushed out to all of the Ledger devices newer than the original Ledger Nano S and put into the firmware whether or not we sign up for the service. So the capability to export your private key is being embedded in the firmware of every Ledger device the next time you update your firmware, whether or not you choose to use the recovery service, which Andreas feels is a breach of the implicit relationship between us and the manufacturer, because many of us decided to buy it based on the pretense that our private keys could never leave the device, because we wanted a true cold storage solution to self-custody our investments. So anyone who does not intend to use the recovery feature is now facing a dilemma, which is whether or not to continue to use the device, knowing that they have added and may continue to add some unnecessary features, which may slightly increase risks, or maybe it doesn't. We don't know yet. It's too early to know at this point. Or we need to make a decision to switch to another device or another means to store our crypto, like with smart contracts, which we explore together in this step-by-step -step video guide you could check out by clicking on the link above. Cool. Here's the deal. Both Andreas and Jameson agree that there is not urgency right now to make any drastic moves. So if you do decide to switch devices or storage processes, do not rush the process. Sweet. Problem number two. Because of the KYC requirements for recovery and the fact that the original device isn't used or needed to do a recovery, that means an identifier that connects these shards to your identity must be available to someone. And of course, all of this is happening just when the ability for AI to deepfake voice and video has gotten extremely sophisticated. And when considering that Ledger has 6 million users, depending on how many users choose to opt into this service, Andreas has doubts about how they will be able to provide this service at scale without sacrificing security. Nice. And the third problem is that these three companies are all entities subject to the jurisdiction and legal process of both national and international organizations, as they are located in these three different countries, France, UK, US. And therefore, they can be coerced to give a shard to law enforcement given some process which you do not control, which would then allow any law enforcement agency that can get two of these companies to give the shard to them, to seize your money, freeze your money, and reveal how much money you have in your wallet. Andreas thinks this is the risk that Ledger is underplaying the most. The risk of government-imposed seizure or freezing of assets for anyone who decides to opt into Ledger's recover services. Because the UK, the US, and France are not three wholly independent countries. They are all members of the Five Eyes Surveillance Network. They are very strong military partners. They collaborate on law enforcement actions. Two of them are in Interpol, and one of them controls international law enforcement in many ways. And Andreas thinks that two shards being in the UK and the US is basically them being the same place so not decentralized at all. So all these factors, in addition to how the announcement was poorly presented, 
are why many people were spooked and panicked about the rollout of Ledger's new recovery service. So I hope you found this video summary helpful and informative. Remember, the most important thing we should keep in mind right now is the onslaught of phishing attacks scammers are deploying right now to try and trick people into giving them their seed freeze. They do this by either lying about a separate firmware update that is actually malware, or by coercing people to email or message them their seed phrase directly, or by tricking them into entering it into a fake website. So if you haven't already, there is a free web browser tool called WalletGuard that can protect you from accessing fake harmful phishing sites. And one of the most important steps we can take as beginners and experts alike to help protect us and our wallets when getting familiar with DeFi tools and transacting online is by downloading WalletGuard. This browser extension acts as a security companion to our crypto wallet of choice. So we can browse the internet and interact with Web3 more securely. I've been using it over the past year and it's been working great. Popping up warnings, helping check everything out before transacting, so it's definitely worth checking out and giving it a go in this crazy environment. When interacting with smart contracts, like for minting NFTs, when accessing the site, WallGuard's phishing protection layer executes and warns you if the website might be harmful, if it was created recently and has low trust, and if you proceed to do so with caution. And if we do proceed before attempting to verify any transaction with our wallet, a second layer of protection is executed with a clear human readable warning about what exactly will happen if you decide to proceed with the transaction, like if it's going to drain your wallet instead of actually minting an NFT. It can also detect and will notify you if the site is making several attempts to interact with your wallet, trying to hack or steal your funds. So WallGuard is basically an all-in-one security dashboard for Web3, so make sure to scroll down and use link below to access the correct and official site to download WallGuard's free extension to protect your wallet and crypto assets today. Awesome. If you would like to watch a step-by-step -step video guide all about Tantrum Wallet, check out this video. If you would like to learn about how we can use multiple wallets to secure our cryptocurrency with smart contracts on Ethereum, check out this video. And to download the WallGuard app for free, click on this link on the screen. Like and subscribe for more. Be safe out there.